So now we're going to be showing how to uh, calculate the demand for labor from a price-taking firm. So the simplest possible case, how much labor should a firm hire? So um, let's um, put ourselves in the shoes of um, a firm. Uh, then let's look into decide, you know, how much, how many workers should I have? So as usual in, uh, in uh, microeconomics, at least at this level, uh, and later as well, uh, we assume that firms want to maximize profits. So here the choice is how much labor to hire. So, and we're looking at that. So the firm is maximizing profits by choosing uh, the amount of labor that it has employed. So what are profits? Well, as usual, it's revenue. So it's P, uh, the price of the output that the firm is, is selling, uh, potatoes or copper or uh, rice or what have you. Uh, and it's a price taker in the output market. So that uh, uh, price is, is taken as a given. Uh, it absorbs the price and then decides how much uh, should it, uh, how many people should it hire. Uh, quantity, instead of putting quantity here um, directly, uh, we make explicit that quantity depends on how much labor you have. Uh, if you don't have, if you have very few uh, people working, you're going to be producing a low quantity. If you have a lot of people working, you can produce a higher quantity. So we put in the production function here. So uh, call that F of Q of L here. So we could think of, of K, K upper bar and L. So you could think of that as, as Q quantity. So K upper bar here is some level of capital that's fixed. We think of this as a short run. So capital is fixed. And then you decide how much labor to hire. So this is going to be your revenue. Your costs are going to be whatever you're paying for the labor, the wage times uh, the amount of labor that you're having or hiring minus also uh, the cost of the capital that you're using times the cost of um, the rental rate of cost of capital. Okay, so this is your profit um, your choices. How to choose L so that this profit is maximized, okay? So as usual in economics and in the course, we uh, use calculus. Uh, we differentiate the profit function, this time with respect to L, because that's what we're choosing, right? So P, we said that was just a constant, times how quantity produced changes as we're changing the amount of labor, okay? So another way word of describing that is what this is what we call the marginal product of labor. If I'm hiring a bit more, how much more stuff, how much more goods am I producing? That's a marginal product at the, at the margin, okay? So this will be the value of hiring an additional worker. You know, how much more am I producing because I hired this additional worker? And what can I sell uh, that additional output for? So what's my cost of hiring an additional worker? Well, differentiating WL with respect to L, uh, W, the wage here is just as constant. It's it's a price taking, the firm's a price taking also, price taker also on the input market, on the, on the labor market. And then uh, the cost of capital is not affected by, by the choice of the labor here in the short run. So on the top of the profit hill is when uh, this is equal to, to zero. Okay, so that's um, the condition for the optimal choice. That's Let's uh, illustrate that in a, in a simple, simple graph. Okay, so we have uh, the amount of labor here on the uh, horizontal axis, and we have wage and uh, price times marginal product of labor on the uh, vertical axis. Okay, so let's um, uh, let's draw the wage. Uh, here first. So, you know, there's a particular wage that this firm is uh, is meeting. That's the wage in the market. Um, this this part and how much will it hire? Well, we need to plot out the price times the marginal product of labor. And we've said before that a typical assumption in economics is that the marginal product of labor is decreasing. Okay, so you know, each additional worker, each additional our work uh, adds to output, but you know they add successively less. The 
100th worker, adds less than the 99th, uh, etc. cetera, uh, for a given capital stock. Okay, um, so um, let's do that in, in light blue here. So let's, we said it's decreasing because marginal product of labor is decreasing, price is constant, so this is value of additional worker. Okay, so we said that the optimal condition is that these two should be equal. So essentially it's saying that the profit maximizing choice of inputs in this simple model is L star here. Over here, the value of an additional worker is greater than the cost of that additional worker. Uh, over here, the value of an additional worker is less than uh, the wage, okay? So uh, that's um, the intuition for the simplest case.